time oh. for maths. Is it time for maths? Yeah. What do you think we're doing in maths this time? You just said. Hmm? You just said. Ooh. It's time for maths. In maths, it's time. No, for. it's time for maths. Oh, I so see. For maths, it's time. I see. So, welcome to maths with me, Mr. S, here, Mr. A, this three counters. It's time to learn about time. Mr. A. Yeah, now we're going to keep it nice and simple today. Even if you think I'm a wizard of time, I know exactly what I'm doing. We're going to... Even if you're an absolute wizard of time, we're going to take it a few steps back and do this one progressively throughout the week. So this is lesson one of five on how to read time with the Learning Lockdown crew. So today we're going to talk about this man. He's on a journey. Oh, hello. Now he's coming from Oxford and he's going to Cambridge. And I can see that because, you know, he's, he must be clever. He's sort of halfway on his journey here. Now, if I was to use the sentence to you here, where has this man just passed, Mr. S? What would you say? Um, he's just passed. The last thing he went past was Oxford. Yes. You wouldn't say Cambridge, would you? Because he hasn't actually even got there yet. No. So where is he going to? Cambridge. It's really simple. When you talk about a journey like this, those things are really easy to understand. But the moment we turn it into a clock... Everyone seems to get really confused. Mm. Now, here's a nice blank clock face for now, with no hands on it. And we need to think about which direction our clock is moving in. And it goes in this direction. And does anyone know what we call that? Do you know? This direction is called clockwise. And it's the direction that the clock always moves, unless you're watching one of those movies where time goes backwards. And for what we need when we're telling time, we need to always think about time moving in a clock wise direction. So, this is our next job. Let's put an hour hand on this. Is this our board. hand or theirs? Not that spanning. We've got an hour hand here on our clock and you can see he could journey around the clock as much as, he, as much as he'd like and he could go to any of these numbers but he'd always have to go in a clockwise direction. Now let's say he is just here between the three and the four. Now, Mr S, is he past or is he two? Well, this, it's difficult to tell when you only have one hand, but I can still tell a little bit. If I look closely, I can see that it's closer to the three than it is to the four. So I would say it's gone past three, but I wouldn't quite say it's two, four, yeah, because he's not close enough, so he's past, it's something past three. Yeah, Mr. S just mentioned something really important here. Wherever the hour hand is closer to, that tends to be the hour you refer to. But you don't say two, three, because he's closer to three you'd have to recognise he's gone past three. He's not going back, he's not going two, three. He's not, can't turn around, can he? And go, go back. back. So we could use the hour hand to tell that. For example, it could be here. And I could say, well, it's in between the nine and the 10, but it's closer to the 10. So I would say that's going to 10 because of the direction he's moving in. We can do this with the hour hand, but an easier way to recognise if we're going past or to an hour is using our minute hand. Now here we need to chop our clock into two halves. We have this half and we have the other half. Now the first half, we call this the past half because if our minute hand is on this half of the clock face, it means that we are going past an hour. We've just recently had one, an hour, an o'clock time and we're just currently past that time. The moment the minute hand has done more than half of its journey and it's in this half of the clock face, then we are going to the next hour, the next o'clock of our day. So, let's try and put some of these skills together. Let's have our minute hand, first of all. He's appeared in this half. So we can say we're going to an hour. We know we're going to an hour because he's in this half of the clock. Well, now we've looked at the minute hand, we need to look at the hour hand. Which hour are we going to? Well, it's in between the five and the six. He's not going to the five because he's only going in one direction. He's going to six. So today, we're not even going to say how many minutes to. We're just going to be able to say this shows that we're going to six. Let's try another one. Now this one, if we look at the minute hand, it's on this half of the clock that we've just said is the past half. So we know it must be past. Then we look at the hour hand and you look and the hour hand has just gone past eight. So it's something past eight. So we know it's past eight. Perfect. Now that's all you're going to do today. You're going to look at the times down below and say... First of all, is it past or two? Look at the minute hand. Then, once you know if it's past or two, which hour is it past or two? Look at the hour hand. And that's all we're gonna do for today. 
Simple as that. Join us tomorrow for Stand on the Chain.